And James, it's not Karula up in the tree. It looks like the young Shungile. Now Karula was up in a tree. She jumped down and um, she's just gone and lay down in some long grass. We can't see her now, but she's very close to us. Well, hopefully she'll stand up and we'll be able to show you uh, show you her. But um, what a wonderful <laughs> tree for this young leopard to climb. Now, it's in, actually incredibly high. Amazing how agile they are, able to climb these trees. Now, the carcass is still in the same position. So, Karula obviously didn't feel like she was threatened. And I mentioned it yesterday with the long grass at the moment um, and the very thick bush. It often masks the scent of, of a kill uh, fairly well. So leopards don't necessarily have to hoist their kills as much. But have a look at that large marula and that leopard right up in that, in that bra or lying on that branch. And uh, you know, some people think that leopards are up in trees all the time. It's not the case. We're very fortunate that these young leopards uh, and Karula also enjoys climbing trees and uh, enjoys lying in the trees now and then. It's not often, but it does happen. And again, it's probably a nice cool breeze up there. Nice little vantage point for them to look around. Survey the landscape and see what is around them. Crassy. Oh, I'm not sure, it's very difficult to say where leopard's favorite place is during the course of the evening. Um, I, I would say they probably just lay on the ground. Um, I mean, if there, if there was a tree possibly that, uh, that was close by and very comfortable, they may go and lay up there. But it is, we need to remember, it's more comfortable for a leopard to lie on the ground than it is in, up in a tree. So I would say... I would say probably just in a in a little thicket. Um, if if they're not hunting, of course. But remember, leopards are generally quite active at at night, and they do enjoy hunting under the cover of darkness. It's a little bit easier for them to stalk their prey. Um, so if they're not hunting, like these leopards wouldn't have been because they've got to kill. So they probably would have just lay in the long grass and rested. The, um, the leopards don't really hunt from the trees. Uh, I have seen documentaries with, with leopards um, jumping out of a tree onto a, an impala or unsuspecting antelope walking underneath the tree. But, but again, that's very, very rare. Usually they are ambush predators. They try and stalk their prey through the long grass or through the bush and get very close before they hunt. Um, so I wouldn't say that it never happens, but it's very, very, I think it's quite rare for it, for it to happen. Oh, there we go. Here's the young male. Speak of the devil. Look at that. Good morning. So great, he's so close to us. I'm just going to keep my voice down a little bit and see what he does. <laughs> um, it sounds like Osana has got a very upset stomach. Possibly too much impala last night. <laughs> I really hope the smell does not drift this way.
curious to see what he's going to do. If he's going to decide to climb up into a tree or... Wow! <laughs> there, there he is, look at that. It's just at the top of the tree. A little bit higher, there he goes. Look at that! As I said, these young cubs or young leopards are always incredible to watch. Just purely because they're so active. They're up and down trees, they move around a lot. Um, they're exploring, all of this is exploring, learning learning about their, their surroundings and um, and also probably working on their on their um, their climbing skills and and um, you know just how agile they can be in the in the trees Now, Cressy, it's that's a good question, and I'm glad you asked that because I I do sometimes think it is very difficult. You want to know how do we distinguish the leopards? So, Cressy, with with this situation, it's actually fairly easy for us um, because it's the adult female, which we can see she's a, a bit older um, and and obviously bigger than these two youngsters. Uh, the young female, that one up in the tree, is much smaller than the young male. The young male is actually almost the size of the of his mother at the moment. He's just walking through the long grass here. But um, but we can see he is still a young leopard. So we this is the only female leopard in the area at the moment with two young uh, young cubs this age. that are about a year old. So it makes it easier to then distinguish distinguish them from other leopards. The other thing, Chris, is with us viewing these animals fairly regularly, you get to see spot patterns above the whiskers and, and that. Um, I do think you need to have a very, very close look. And um, and it does, it does take time to be able to identify them. He's busy stalking his mother at the moment. Let's see if he decides to pounce on her. But... Um, but Crassy, I do think it, it is difficult, and I'm always hesitant just to um, to shout out a name when we do find a leopard. I always want to make sure um, it is that specific leopard, because sometimes I think people do get it wrong. Actually, I know for a fact people get it wrong on occasion. And we sometimes assume that it's a leopard that we see regularly, when it might not necessarily be. You really do have to look very, very carefully at certain distinguishing markings if you are trying to identify leopards and that's why you know sometimes I I, I say this I, I prefer not identifying the leopards it's just beautiful and wonderful to see a leopard but again when we are viewing them like we are on safari live and we're seeing them fairly regularly then it is nice to know which leopards are moving through the area A lot of flies around at the moment. Now, this is great. Yesterday we saw the young female being very playful with her mother and rubbing up against her and sitting in front of her. Now, now watch how you can see Karula every now and then hissing and snarling at the young male. Um, she doesn't I mean she's she's playful but she doesn't she doesn't want her cub sitting on her that's for sure look at that interesting now as I said that when they get a bit older uh, you'll see you'll see she will start hissing and growling at them a lot more and the, those are all signs that she's pushing them out she's going to try and get them to move on and become independent that usually happens at about a year and a half on average.